Hello everyone, welcome back to our Call of the Cthulhu, uh, Call of Cthulhu campaign. I am your keeper of arcane lore, and once again I am honored to be able to bring a story to you with these wonderful people here, and I will just go ahead and let them introduce themselves and the character that they will be playing, and now uh, we will start with Sir Monolith. Hi, I'm Sir Monolith, or at Sir Monolith, uh, and social stuff. Um, I'm playing Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo knows not to jump down fire escapes, um, but I'm sure he'll go do some other stupid thing to possibly tempt fate. Sure, sure. There's plenty of opportunities. Uh, next up, Mama. Hello, everyone. I am Mama McStabber, and I'll be playing Florence Buckley, a moneyed widow that lives in the Hamptons. All right. I'm sure that'll be a wonderful opportunity as well. Uh, next up, uh, Ari. Hi, I'm Ari. Uh, I will be playing Charles Royce today, who is the um, uh, investigator out of these these this group. It, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. It's gonna... All right. Last but certainly not least, we have Classical Gliza. Everyone, uh, I'm Gliza. Today, I will be playing Jasper who is uh, perfectly fine, uh, even though uh, he fell down the side of a building. Uh, and they're also not absolutely smitten by anyone here, which is the truth, uh, the actual truth. Jasper is not smitten by anybody. Uh, me think Doth protests too much, but mm. to each their own. Um, we are rejoining our investigators the day of January 17th. It is the early morning as our investigators are coming together. You all have a date today, specifically the funeral for your dear companion, Jackson Alliance. So are you all meeting at Florence's home? Sure. Yeah. yeah sure okay then i will say you all are able to meet up uh, early, at this early afternoon and we'll say the servants have already arranged a decent enough breakfast and lunch for you all mm -hmm. uh, so i will leave conversation to you all florence does advise the group um dr washington is in need of convalescence at this time still healing from his wounds and he will not be able to attend the funeral today. Understandable. Yeah. I'm sure he can go visit the grave later. It's fine. Yeah. Maybe he, he, he would uh, appreciate being alone at that time anyway. Perhaps. So, how did things go with the lieutenant? He, he gave us some information, but he was also very clear. He did not want us to continue looking. And I don't know about you, but Jackson is a good friend of us, of ours. And if, if we can learn more about why he's dead, it's not going to stop me just because he asks nicely. Understood. Charlie, what were you able to get from Miss Adams? Well, it looks like um, her husband was um, part of a citizen's watch in the neighborhood, um, keeping an eye on um, the goings on. Evidently, there is a place uh, called the Juju House with a Mr. Silas Aquane, who is um, evidently uh, might be causing problems down there. Uh, she said um, <sighs> his lawyer was a public defender, um, <sighs> but uh, th he no longer has a lawyer. The case is pretty much wrapped up. Hmm. And the lawyer basically just doesn't want to continue. Um, I told her we'd do what we could to free her husband. 
I'll put a call into my son, see if he'll pick up the case. He's going to have to get an appeal put in soon to stay the execution. Um, <clears throat> we did try to reach out to, uh, or at least try to have a conversation with Mr. Adams ourselves, but no promises were made. All that Lieutenant Poole said was he was going to try. Perhaps if I can get my son to take on the case, he can ensure that at least some of us are able to speak to him. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Castellano and I <clears throat> went to the university to do some research on this cult, and we kept seeing references to a book that Mr. Elias wrote called Africa's Dark Sex. Hmm. And... Unfortunately, it had been the copy that the library had had been missing for two weeks now. Not checked out, just missing. Hmm. I have a Do, call out yep. to the I have a call out to the publishing house. They should be delivering a copy within the next day or two. Okay, that's good. I was about to ask <clears throat> if we knew anybody that had a copy. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with the with the publishing house that Mr. Elias used. That's good. So, all right. Did, did they say who checked the book out? It wasn't checked out. It was just missing. Oh, well, someone stole stole a book. Well, that's not going to be it good. Could be somebody that works there, a librarian. Could be. Could be mm -hmm. a student. Could be any staff member. Mm -hmm. We or don't know who all is involved in this cult. <laughs> But I bet you if he if this poor incarcerated Mr. Adams was on a citizen watch and found out that this individual was doing weird things at this juju house, that's likely why he got framed for murder. And I wouldn't be surprised if the captain of the 14th is also involved set him up like I a right patsy a possibility or maybe he just wants to have an easy close to the case could be that too yeah because when i was asking about him when nobody was was talking to him about him at all it was like the entire neighborhood was basically buttoned up i happened by chance to run into mrs adams as she was leaving her house they're afraid of him that's what i'm the feeling captain? Mm -hmm. the captain the captain by the looks of it uh they, they wouldn't talk about adams either but i'm guessing if they figured out he was framed they're just trying to lay low but she said he was looking into the juju house and mr silas nakwane as the owner from what i look from what i sounds like elias was also asking about it from what she said. Hmm. And now Elias is dead. Mm -hmm. So we have one looking into it that's now charged with murders that he didn't commit, likely. And he's now a scapegoat to distract from their dealings. And a fairly competent investigator gets involved and they murder him. This does not bode well for us. Yes, but when has it ever does? Honestly, if the lieutenant doesn't want us getting involved, then he needs to investigate that place. But it's One outside of but it's outside of his jurisdiction. And the captain likely has either direct involvement or he's paid off. Well, whether Lieutenant Poole decides to investigate it or not, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to get investigated. By, by I heard you. By I heard you. And if you want to go and run to your death, you can. I, I want to 
Jackson has done a lot of things for us. I understand that. And I, I, I will not rest until I find out why he is no longer with us. And if it, if that counts as running to my death, then by all means, I'm not okay. afraid. Okay. I just want us to understand what we are likely getting involved in. This is a group of murderers, murderers who are cultists. And I don't think slapping some piece of ancient gold in place is going to destroy them. They can still die by guns. But they may have them too. So. Well, well, I would say maybe we at least look into, don't necessarily have to go to, but we can always look, like see if the police have any records or if there's any records in its papers about the Juju house, like anything. Yeah, we can definitely look from a distance. said it just didn't go to print. Sometimes it happens. But uh, from how scared everybody was, I think uh, playing cautious is probably the, the best option. But for today, we have a funeral to attend. A pin on it then. Yes. Yeah. All right. As you all are finishing up your breakfast as well as your conversation uh florence one of your uh ladies maids enters with a umbrella and she hands it uh to you um there is a gentle snowfall i don't think it is going to get too bad but you may want to pack the uh a proper cloak um, yeah Gra grab my uh my stole please and it will be a fur stole she wears <clears throat> of course and she does return a short while later and helps you to to get properly dressed mm -hmm. um, her gloves her hat yeah mm -hmm. i have arranged for the car to be uh, brought forward as well um if there's anything else you need please feel free to let me know yes please make sure dr washington gets his lunch while we are gone uh, it will be brought in thank you All right, and with that, it sounds like you all are ready to go. The uh, trip to Cypress Hill Cemetery is slow moving. The, the streets are still a bit packed from uh, both traffic and the recent snowfalls. But as you are cresting the hill leading into this small cemetery, you find there is a small press scrum that has been put together. A, a few newspapers as well as a couple of larger magazines are in attendance so they are cordoned off to one side and you see standing uh, outside of the church there are a figure that you assume would be the priest as well as two other people are you all doing anything as you approach does action jackson have a wife uh, not as far as you know. Okay. Uh, I would like to approach the family, at least the, the, the one that I think is the family, um, and offer my condolences. Okay. As you approach, you do see uh, none of them seem to bear a resemblance to Jackson. Uh, but as you approach, a, uh, a white man kind of looks at you and goes, I take it that you are one of Mr. Elias's confidants I'd heard he had some friends come in this week yes we were supposed to meet him uh, the same day that he unfortunately passed oh that is good that you are here I and he looks over at the the rest of you uh, please uh, you can come I rush. Fortunately, the media isn't going to be leaving anytime soon.
He was a oh, famous fool. man. He was. He had a way of impacting everyone he came across, and leaving a permanent reminder. Oh, oh, oh forgive me. Uh, my name is Jonah Kensington. I was, I am, uh, responsible for uh, the publishing of his works uh, with Prospero House. I'm sure you all are aware of his, of his so at least some of his tomes. Uh, What's his name? A uh, Jonah he Kensington. I will. And with that, Florence will butt in and say, oh, yes, uh, Mr. Kensington, actually, I had a call placed to your house. They should be delivering one of his tomes soon. Yes, I had been told someone had called for, what was it, uh, Africa's Dark Sex, correct? Yes, that's the one. Florence Buckley, pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you, though I wish it could have been <clears throat> under better circumstances. Absolutely. How, and he gestures to the, the man who you see is has turned his back to you and is gesturing to a woman who is coming up the, the stone path. Uh, this here is uh, Mr. Carlton Ramsey. Uh, he is the uh, executor of Mr. Elias's will. And mm. on that there is his niece, a uh, Willa, Willa Slee, I believe. What was the last name again? Oh, Slee. Here, I'll just type it because I'm not, okay. not entirely sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Okay. And I don't want uh, <laughs> to do, okay. do too bad a job. Might be sly, actually. Sly, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And uh, as this final member of the uh, procession arrives, the priest looks at each of you. If there is anyone who wishes to speak uh, good words for Mr. Elias, you may do so now before we commit his reins to the earth. Um, I would like to. Uh, say some words. Um, and I, I, I go to the front. Um, I sometimes when people say they owe their lives to their friends, um, they don't mean it the same way. But my friends and I owe our lives to the man who passed away. To Jackson Elias and one of my biggest regrets is not coming a day early to see my friend and, it was a good uh, man as you finish uh, Carlton Ramsey looks at looks down at the coffin he was a firebrand of a man recall hearing his stories of exploring the world and it will be difficult to not to expect another phone call tomorrow uh, detailing some unique wonder or exotic location but perhaps now he can finally rest As he finishes, the priest looks to each of you. And then he reaches down and you see he picks up a handful of dirt and tosses it onto the coffin. And then it is slowly lowered into the ground as a as a soft music um, is played. Are there any conversations you all wish to have at this point? I would say Florence is very stoic at this point. Yeah. Jasper is quiet as well. Okay. Charles is uh, quiet, but he's uh, taking a look around to see if he recognizes that he faces. Um, uh, you can make a spot hidden roll. You can make a spot hidden roll. First roll of the session. Let's see. Complete failure, never mind. Oh. If it's just normal <laughs> failure. Oh. You know, I'm I'm misty-eyed with tears. 
It's the snow it's is very see. difficult to deal with. Um, as you all stand there in silence, uh, the grave is slowly covered over, and you can see now the the press, who had been at a respectable, respectful quiet, has started to to pick up, and you can see uh, Jonah looks at looks at them and then looks at you all. Um, this Monday, I believe, uh, Mr. Ramsey has scheduled the reading of Mr. Elias's will. Uh, based on what he told me before he was gone, I think you all, I think he would have wanted you all to be in attendance. All right. What time tomorrow? Uh, it's on the 19th, uh, two days from now, Monday. Oh, and it'll geez. be, and he looks over at Ramses, who looks at you and goes, I'll oh, be doing it, uh, two or three in the afternoon. Uh, Perfect. All right. Oh, we will do our Kensington. best to be there. And uh, Kensington goes. Also, I um, he left a few papers with me for safekeeping. He mentioned that um, should something happen and you all decided to continue looking into his investigations to make them available to you, you may come by a uh, Prospero house at your leisure and I can share them with you and I can also share uh, the book you were looking for then as well if that would be more convenient is the publishing house open today um there's a small crew but I will be returning there after this so if you go free today we could meet I believe we should come by then I agree All right, well, I will look forward to it, but for now... Would you like for us to cover the press so you can leave? I would appreciate that. She looks to Jasper and says, I think we can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you momentarily uh, confused before nodding. <laughs> <laughs> and Florence will go arm in arm with Jasper to go interface with the press to keep them engaged while the others discreetly leave. <laughs> All right. The two Can social I... powerhouses here. <laughs> All right, let's see the rich how well this goes. The rich people. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and Florence turns on the waterworks and everything. <laughs> and Jasper is just like making angry looks yeah. at everybody because you know okay, well, please well. respect the deceased oh <laughs> what are you right, doing well, now, now oh. we have to see how, how well this goes so give me either a fast talk or an intimidate oh, all right john will work um, if you I are mean, trying to be charming in, in my dismay <laughs> hey wait uh you said charm fast talk or, or intimidate. intimidate if you are trying to be scary where, what is my fast talk? I got a hard success on mine. Should be. Mm -hmm. should I'm just be gonna do the... charm, but like, all right, all right. like endearingly grumpy. You know, like one of those teddy bears that you want to be like, <laughs> look at them. They're in pain, but they're focusing in trying to protect Florence. Yeah, let's do charm. All right. It is an extreme snap. <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. So, as you two approach, you see the, the media is, <laughs> uh, the media is very much very focused on getting information. But as you uh, give a, a master, oh, we are class, misdirecting them all very charmingly. <laughs> yes, uh, as you're doing so, can I have you give me a spot hidden row, please? Sure. All of us? Oh. I would say you I, I would say um you two can get get a bonus dice because you're directly talking. And then oh, Ricardo okay. and Charlie can Oh okay, so that would be a twenty three with a bonus. because uh, okay. it'll just replace the six. Um then Ricardo and Charlie can roll normally. Oh cool. I'm gonna roll again just to see. Uh well actually I don't know how bonus penalty works. Do I just you just click, click it? Yeah, just click the button. 
Uh oh. It says no ability was found. <laughs> Let me okay. try it again. Yep, I did it, it for said you. No ability was found. Yeah, I did it for you, uh, and it was just an eight, so it doesn't change anything for you. Uh, unfortunately, though, our friend Charlie here fumbled the roll. You uh, know, no, <laughs> he falls into an open grave or something. I don't know. <laughs> Trips <laughs> over. Been, a not been his day. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, uh, Charlie, you're trying. He's got to too many things on you, his mind. <laughs> you think you see something interesting, but the snow kind of gets into your eyes, and you trip and fall into a snow mound. Uh, fortunately, Ow. it's not too too bad, so you don't take any actual damage. But your your pride is damaged, and you're pretty sure someone got a picture of it. As you're yeah. going down, you swore and you saw the flash. <laughs> but you're pretty sure someone someone got a picture of that. But it'll be. Okay. <laughs> Georgie's uh, before... either gonna roast me for this, or I'll, I'll never hear the end for Will, Harry, or Elizabeth. <laughs> He's just laying in the snow. Like I uh, give up. For okay. Florence and Jasper and Ricardo, as you're looking, you catch the press pin of one of the women who has kind of been trying to elbow her way forward, and you recognize her as Rebecca Schosenberg. Yes, the woman who wrote the articles about uh, one about Jackson Elias's death, but as well as the articles about the other eight victims who. Uh, have been currently attributed to uh, Mr. Adams. And then she walks forward, she goes, Do you have anything to say about the similarities between uh, your friend and the other eight victims that were uh, found and that Mr. Hilton Adams has gone to uh, Sing Sing for? Yes, obviously Mr. Adams couldn't have done it, could he? You see the, the almost a, a literal light flash in her eyes as she looks at you and she goes, can I get you to come back to my offices to, to get you on record? <laughs> Give me your card. I will call when I'm available. And she does. She hands you a card for the New York Times. Excellent. Yes, Florence will call her son first to get him on this case, and then she'll go on record <laughs> as the wid widow of Justice Buckley right. in Manhattan. <laughs> I, I would say uh, leaving is going to be difficult, but uh, it is not because you all have handled the press very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but so you all are able to, uh, you managed to give everyone, including the priests, enough time to kind of make their exits before. Yeah, uh, you all leave, and the the uh, the press begin to fade away as well. I mean, uh, you throw two rich socialites in the mix. They're 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 yeah. <laughs> so, where are you headed? I will say, I will say, the entire event was about an hour and a half, so it was about three thirty in the afternoon. And Florence looks and says, "Let's let's head to Prospero House to get yeah. those papers and the book." Good idea. You're same idea. Mm -hmm. All right. The ride to um, Lexington Avenue is pretty short. Um, Florence is going to ask Charlie, are you okay, dear? Yes, I'm just waiting to get back to Boston and see which one of my siblings roasts me first for it. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be Georgie or Elizabeth. I know it in my bones. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I run into William first. Oh Lord! <laughs> I don't know about Char Charlie. I was I was under suspicion that you know, it's gonna be May. <laughs> God. <laughs> the word you're looking for, Charlie, is anyways. <laughs> anyways, uh, you no, know, it's uh, I really I just I, I've been to too many funerals. I just. It's not a couple's place. It's okay. Yeah. I think you are also one of the reasons uh, that the media and the press let us go pretty quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. So, we're going to go look at the book and the papers. And then we're going to go talk to that reporter lady. Uh, Miss Schossenberg. I need to point. call my son first. 
get him to take the case. Then, because yeah. as soon as I give an official statement on my beliefs on this, I'm the widow of a justice that had a reputation in Manhattan. That will generate some, some news. It for will. Sure. It will. So as soon as I do that, poor Mr. Adams is going to get hounded by requests from press. So he needs to have a good lawyer. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And we're going to be putting a big spotlight on Sing Sing and the police for imprisoning the wrong person. Oh, uh, that, that should make Captain Robeson very happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but yes, we will go get the book and the papers that Jackson left for us. And then, if you all wish to go, you know, research anything, I can go home, make a call to my son and then set up an appointment to go give a statement. Sounds like a plan. Okay. All right, the car eventually makes its way into Prospero House and you find it is a, a modest building, uh, definitely not amongst the, the most well-to-do publishing houses. Um, and as you enter, there is a receptionist dressed in very nice clothing and as she sees you enter she smiles um hi how can i help you good afternoon mr kensington is expecting us of course of course if you just follow the pathway all the way to the end and take a right you'll find him waiting for you thank you and uh, as you, I assume you're doing that without mm -hmm. delay. Okay. As you enter, you find a very simple office room. Uh, Kensington is sitting there uh, at his desk. He does have what looks to be a glass of what some might say would be alcohol, but alcohol is not legal. So it's just, is it of a course good it scotch? Not be that. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you ask him that? I do. I say, is that scotch? He looks around almost conspiratorially and he goes, it could be, of course. Uh, please come in and uh, close the door. Uh, I would <laughs> love to give you an opportunity to find out for yourself. <laughs> and after everyone enters Florence, closes the door behind them. <laughs> and he does pull out a glass of very nice scotch. You actually find that it is uh, uh, probably upwards of $100 or so, you think? Mm -hmm. uh, and he does pour uh, each of you a glass if you so choose to uh, take Jasper, it. Jasper uh, declines. Right. Florence will take hers and, and take a, a polite sip and enjoy the very good scotch. <laughs> <laughs> Funerals are always difficult, but they, well, they are what they are. I'm glad to see you all aren't good spirits, though. Well, as good as we can be, Mr. Elias was a companion through a very trying time. And he was very helpful to ensuring we survived the situation. I understand he left some papers for us. And if I could get that book while here, that would be great. Yes, yes, of course. And uh, he reaches underneath his desk and he pulls out, uh, one is a manila folder and the other is a copy of Africa's Dark Sex. It looks like it's, it's very recently off of the printing press. Excellent. And he places both on his desk. Uh, you will. Uh, free to take this copy with you. Uh, it's become Thank you. much rarer recently, but I think a lot. Do of I owe you anything for it? it? And she no, picks it up. No, no, Thank no, you, no, 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 no. Um, um, as I mentioned earlier, there were a few uh, papers that he was looking into, and he opens the Manila folder, and uh, I will start sharing them with you all on the roll twenty if you will.
And, uh, uh, actually, Charlie wouldn't know. No, Charlie was there. Uh, Charlie, as you look at that, you see the... One of them is the matchbook that was damaged somehow. Um, oh, man, he's not... He, he's, he's gonna be a bit cheeky when he picks it up and gently shakes it in Ricardo's direction. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so as you all are looking at each one, you see the first is a letter addressed to a Roger Carlisle um, from a, a man named Warren Bassart. And uh, let's well, let's just do this round, ro round Robin style. So we'll have uh, we'll start with Ricardo. Would you like to read uh, that first one, that letter to Mr. Carlisle? Oh, let me pull. I was thinking you put it in Discord for some reason. Yeah. Uh, like, these ones are still on the row 20. It's a little bit bigger. Or or not. Tonight only, the cult of darkness in Polynesia and the Southwest. No, not they, that one. Not that, not that one. one. What the, the, the number letter. one. I number can read one. it if you want. What are you, it's in the handouts? Mm -hmm. Oh, Number, yeah, it's in the handouts. Uh, Carlisle eight. Papers, America. Yeah. Number one? Number one. Number one. Oh. I was I was looking at the uh, the Carlisle Papers, Peru. That's, uh, Not that one. Uh, the expedition, number one, right? Yeah. Worldwide Telegraph okay. Service. No. Oh, wait, hold on. No. Nope. Carlisle uh, Sweeper, uh, America. Here. Oh, yeah, I'll I take see. care of it. Um, uh, your lawyer informed me that you seek certain knowledge of this land and its pa distance past, and I believe I can aid you in this regard. Inquiries in the old quarter have identified one Faraz Najar in the street of Jackals, who claims to be in possession of singular curios, which he believes will be of great interest to you. He is prepared to part with these items of, at a suitable price, if a suitable price can be agreed upon, and I shall endeavor to make sure that matters are arranged to your satisfaction. Yours, M. Warren Bassart. Florence is looking at it, and she says, this is dated 1919. Yes, uh, I'm not sure how... Um, how up to date you all are on the Carlisle expedition? Mm. No. Not, I, my, not as up to date as I would like to be. I believe that's what uh, as Mr. J Elias was going to talk to us about, wasn't it? Mm hmm. Yes. Oh, well, please uh, make yourselves comfortable. Um, the Carlisle. Florence takes expedition. another sip of her scotch. <laughs> the Carlisle expedition was a ill-fated journey uh, that just started around 1919 or towards the end, uh, which Roger Kyle Carlisle, as well as a few others, went in search of something in Kenya. The uh, events hereafter were tragic, to say the least. And almost all of them are believed to be dead, if not all of them. And as far as I understood it, the culprits were some sort of cult of a black winged god or some such. Uh, the people, the perpetrators were hung, which is what was unique about uh, Mr. Elias's work. He was under the impression or the belief that he had not, they all had not died and they are somehow part of some sort of uh, conspiracy. Uh, and he will, um, I will let you guys read through each of the other pieces of evidence that I've just shared with you. Um, and for a moment before I start giving you more. And literally, Florence sees the notice from Harvard and says, 
It looks like this book, and she holds up the book in her hand, has gone missing from a few universities. That is what we've been told. Some people have either taken it out and not returned it, or they've gone missing, or people have been asking about it. And just... It was not very popular when it was first written, not that I recall, but it is highly unusual. And when is this talk, has it already passed, about the cult of darkness in Polynesia in the South Pacific? I believe so, yes, though I believe the professor is available. It was, I believe it was Thursday or Friday. Okay. So that is Professor Anthony Cowles that presented on that subject. Okay. So a very knowledgeable man. Very pleasant to speak to when you forget the chance. I believe he teaches out of Miskatonic. Okay. Mm. And Stumbling Tiger Bar. Hmm. Not a place I've heard of. I believe that one comes genuinely from Shanghai. One of his more recent trips took him out to Asia. I don't <clears throat> recall why his writings at that time became a bit more unusual. Hmm. And then... A memo card from Emerson Imports with Silas Nakwame written on it. That is a name we've heard. So i have not very familiar with him, though I do think he may be from Harlem. He is. And it seems that likely he's been getting objects delivered because I know the folks that run Emerson Imports will turn a blind eye with enough money. They do have a reputation. <laughs> Not always present. All right. Um, and uh, he hands you one more piece. This one was written, well, as you can see, in November, and uh, this one will actually be on the Discord. Okay. As, as I said, he believes the Carlisle expedition may have survived, which uh, Maybe partially why he met at the end he did. Did he leave behind the list you're breaking of everybody up, Ari. who was on the expedition? Uh, hold on, ask your question again. You kind of broke up for a minute there. Um, did he leave behind a list of the people who are on the Carlisle expedition? Um, I don't believe he did, but I do believe I have one of those. Uh, give me a moment. And you see he turns and he begins going through a filing cabinet behind him. This Keeper, just to clarify, this is a letter that Jackson wrote to Jonah. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Blood and kisses, Jay. Interesting term. Mm -hmm. Is this something that I'm aware of he does? Like, he ends his uh, letters like this? Because I'm assuming we exchange letters. Mm, sometimes you recognize the, I would say you recognize the, the penmanship is his, though you do notice it is much more excited uh, than what you used to. Uh, the express that you would have gotten have been, would have been a bit more formal, you know, how are you, things are going well, that kind of thing. You, though you aren't sure if this is because of the familiarity between him and Jonah, um, or if it's 
something else. Okay. He, well, here, he does return to you, Charlie. I do. And uh, he pans you a, a slip of paper that has five names written on it. Um, uh, the first is a Roger VW Carlisle. Um, the second is Dr. Robert Ellington Houston. Third is Sir Aubrey Pinhew, a Baronet of Pevency. Next is Miss Hypatia Celestine Masters. And then the final one is Jack Oriel Brady. Or Brady. Or Brady. Could you please spell that? Oriel? Yes, I can. One second. I will type it out for you. Jack Oriel. Oh, I spelled that entirely wrong. Okay, got it. Um, they were all. I thought you said Oreo. Like, I did uh -huh. too. And I, I was thinking <laughs> Oreo? Oreo? No, no Oreo. No, no, no. <laughs> 1920s um, names. <laughs> Not, not, not as fun, not as fun. Um, um, they are a unique group. Uh, Mr. Carlisle was, well, of the Carlisles. Yes. Um, the last gentleman there is not exactly a savory type. He was, a, well, most assumed he was brought there to be uh, extra muscle, as they say, but doesn't quite fit the academic lifestyle. Very unique look. Uh, they say his nose has been broken more times than many could count. He has a face with character. Your words are kinder than mine. <laughs> um, there was also a list of, uh, of things he had been looking into. I suppose you could call them clues if you're uh, investi uh, investigatory. That's, that's absolutely not a word, but it will be. Anything a... could be a clue. Like he sent you this letter and said that he had things that might make you both rich. Yes, he has a, a habit of promising a lot and. <laughs> After your journey, I was, I believed he was rather successful. I came back with a number of interesting items from Peru. It appears this time it was not to be. Or mm. perhaps he angered the wrong people. Hmm. The last time I heard from him was in, I believe, the 16th of December, not more than three weeks ago or so. He mentioned he was in London at the time, and he sounded excited. Uh, he said he had seen unbelievable things and that he was on the cusp of putting together a conspiracy that would shake the world or something, but he would not tell me about it directly. Hmm. Well, I know the Penhues are associated in London. However, we have cultists murdering people right here in New York. I personally am one that's inclined to believe we should clean up our own house before we start moving into other people's houses. 
Can I have you all make me a psychology role, please? Oh lord, I can't. Oh no. no. Hell yeah. I actually succeeded on that. Holy crap. Oh. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see here. Oh damn. Whoa! <laughs> I have 10 in psychology and I got a success. <laughs> nice. Extreme success. <laughs> I am the only one that failed psychology. <laughs> right. Well, I am not uh, of, of roll 20. So. For everyone except Jasper, as you're reviewing this stuff, you look at Kensington and for a moment you can see there's this anxiety, this hesitation, and you get a feeling that he is not sharing everything with you. Mr. Kensington. Yes. We do wish to help and bring those that murdered Mr. Elias to justice. But we need you to be as forthcoming as possible. Of, of course, of course. And we have reaches. seen strange things ourselves. You can trust us. I, I did not want to risk causing harm to Mr. Elias' reputation. And then he reaches in it to the filing cabinet. He goes all the way to the very back. And as he does, he pulls out a folder with a sheet of paper inside. Very difficult to read. Share it with you guys so you can have fun Oops, I didn't too. I mean to hit that. Um, and as he, I still know I can it, succeed on a throw roll, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Start throwing stuff. Um, you see, threw it on the ground. He, really good. <laughs> after he arrived in New York, he sent us another letter. Only his, well, he, he was not. Writing very well. It was, as you can see, it, difficult to read. Yes, many names, many forms, but able. No, but all the names and lowered and towards towards one end. Yeah. Need help. Need help. I'm too, too big. Too big. Too ghastly. Their harm? Dreams? Dreams or harm? Is that harms or dreams? That might be dreams. Dreams these, like These Carlisle. dreams. Dreams like Carlisle's. Okay. Face. Check that. Check that. Psychoanalyst files, all of them survived. All of them survived. Yeah. They'll Let's see. Does that mean uh, the whole expedition survived? That is what we believe. We it took a while, but we believe. He's saying that they've all survived and that they will open some sort of gate to bring They'll open someone. the gate. Why? Yeah. They will bring some thing through. What, what gate? What are they talking about? I do not know. He mentions that Carlisle would have some books in his safe. But as far as I know, there's been no reports of Mr. Carlisle returning to America since the expedition. He was afraid that someone had been searching for him. And, well, he thought the ocean would protect him, but it appears they did not. It's concerning. Is, is, is Mr. Carlisle from New York? Uh, yes, they all. His estate is nearby, I believe, within a few hours' travel. 
Last I heard, his sister should be in charge. We live near the Hudson, roughly half an hour. Hmm. Perhaps we should go look at Charlie's house. Thank you, Mr. Kensington. Do you mind if we take these papers? No, no, you may take them. Uh, I just request you do not share the last one with of the course. press. They can... Of course. This will be kept in confidence. In that case, I do wish you all luck if you choose to continue uh, where Mr. Elias left off. If there's anything Florence we can do. Lawrence finishes her scotch and sets the glass down and says, thank you for the drink. Thank you. You are welcome to stay longer if you wish. It is, I know it is getting rather cold outside. Yes, I think we will return now. There's a few other matters we need to deal with while there's still daylight. All right, enjoy yourselves. And once we leave and get back in the car, Florence is going to say, I have to get my son to take this case. Mm-hmm. We have to light a fire under the police to investigate. I agree. I, I agree, too. Um... Can, There's a lot can, of avenues we can go through, but we have to protect Mr. Adams first. Uh, undoubtedly, because the instant... The instant we start looking into this, he's going to go. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, can, can can I see the book? I'm yeah, gonna and I will hand the book to her. Yeah, Charlie's going to flip through the book and see to like him. why... Sorry why there would have been a reason for somebody to take it from multiple libraries yeah and look at the um cult of the bloody tongue try try to mm-hmm. re- look and see what's in on that yeah yeah he's he's gonna flip through it and try and see if he can find it as you page through the book you find it is filled with dark sets throughout um, all of africa you do see there's mentions of the cult of the bloody tongue um, it is mentioned uh, the history that you learned a little while ago, but the thing you find interesting is that there's a dimension of a cult that worships a black-winged bat. There's some sort of what reads like a cross between a vampire from legend and some wrong monster that reminds you a bit of the Kari City. Only these ones don't seem to consume fat in the same way. And as we're going through it, you find that there are mentions uh, from Elias to sects that are believed to have come to originate in Africa and then to travel in other places. You see there's just mentioned a sand bat cult that may have have gone to Australia. Uh, There's, as you're paging through it, you find depictions of cults including one that is believed to have left Africa and traveled to America a offshoot of a cult that isn't named here but the, the that you know is a part of the cult of the bloody tongue that has seemed to have taken up that Jackson believes may still be operating to this day which based on what you've known and what you've encountered he might be right Charlie as he's going through the book will be reading the relevant pages out loud since they're in the car yeah you have you, you, you guys can take the car wherever you wish. Once I'm dropped off at the house, um, I'll check in on Dr. Washington and then call my son. Um, I'll make an arrangement for us to meet with the reporter tomorrow mm-hmm. to give time for my son to get on the case. 
<clears throat> so. Hmm. I think I'm I, I think I'm gonna make make a couple phone calls, see what I can get on month. Uh, got some newspaper contacts, see what I can dig up about the Juju house and, and Silas. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to call Georgie and see if she knows roughly when that book went missing, if she remembers it when she worked at the library. See maybe if we can get a ballpark of when it disappeared. Jen, uh, can I, is there anywhere where I could do some kind of like library use thing to go and research that topic as well separately? To you could sure. There are a few different libraries in the city. You go to one of the universities as well. So, being on which one you go to, you may get different information. Uh, does anybody want to see? I probably pick whatever see? sounds the best, or even maybe the closest. Uh, D D Dr. Castellano, if you're going to a library, do you want to see if maybe we could eventually get an interview with uh, uh, Cowles? Sure. Yeah. Hey, Professor Cowles, that would be good. I guess I'll go to the library at the school for wherever that kind of works. Okay. Um, so That's at Muscatonic. Miskatonic? I'm still not ah. feeling completely well from the fall. I think I will rest uh, and stay at the house if it's not if it's all right with you, Florence. Of course. Okay. So it sounds like we're splitting the party. Of course we yeah. are. Of course yeah, we are. Lord. It's the best way to cover the most ground when investigating. Yeah, right. It is. <laughs> also the so, safest way. The safest way. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Charlie's kind of just using a phone. <laughs> All right. So um, you, Florence and Jasper are going back to Florence's home. Um, Charlie, are you going to the library to use the phone? Or are you going back to Florence's home to use? Or are you her staying phone? at a hotel or something like that? Um, he'd probably hit up a library to use their phone. Right. So Ricardo and Charlie are going to the library. Yeah, they'd All probably right, go so... to the same one, kind of stick a little bit together. Mm -hmm. All right, I hear nothing so, but good so... stuff happens at Miskatonic. Yes, so, um, Miskatonic is going to be quite a while away, I believe, a couple of hours. So, if you are so, if you are going to drive to Miskatonic, uh, we'll say that'll basically be a full day trip. So, you two will be busy for the rest of today. Mm. Um, or you can make a call to him, to the professor. Which would you prefer? I'd say we find a library close by and make a call. Sure. Yeah. That's, so that way that's you fine. can use the library as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's still, well, it's, plus, I don't look forward to all that driving anyway. All right, sounds like you guys are being smart. So you guys are going to go to the library. I will say you're able to go to New York University's library. It is relatively open to the public. And as a professor and a, a journalist, you could definitely get in. So, um, Ricardo, if you're looking for stuff in the library, if you want to look for stuff in the library, that'll be a library use role. But okay. if you're just calling up the professor, go ahead and do that. Do both, but um, which one do you want me to do first? Let's start with library use roll. Okay. Look at that. And you were one. looking for information on the expedition, correct? Yeah, yeah. Everything, everything you find on the expedition, whether it's uh, whether it's books or articles. Um, I didn't know if anybody had tried to write any kind of like stuff about it yet. Uh, ooh, failure! Wow. Okay. Never mind. So what I will say with a failure, you're still able to find the information. Um, it just takes you a lot longer. Um, and what you find is that the Carlisle expedition started off fine. They were traveling 
um, throughout the world, him and his group, but they eventually encounter an issue. No one is quite sure what happened, but the current belief, the current theory is that they encountered a group of Nandi tribesmen and whatever happened during this encounter led to the expedition's demise. Uh, the, the, the people at the time found the remains of 12 dozen members of the expedition, though most of them had not been any of the, the high members that you learned. They weren't uh, Aubrey Pinhe or Hypatia. What else would you learn with the fail? I would say you are also aware that the murderers were hung for what happened. But that'll be all that you learned from specifically from the library trip. Um, all right. uh, Charlie, what are you doing during this period? Or are you just making the phone call? Making a couple phone calls. Uh, first one is he's going to call up to Harvard and see if he can't get either Georgie or one of the other librarians he knows on the phone uh, to see if any of them know roughly when that book disappeared. Uh, it's, okay. it's, it's Harvard, so he's assuming they're keeping a pr pretty close eye on their inventory. Um, and then the second one, he was going to um, probably make a couple phone calls to his newspaper contacts to see if they have any, like, unwritten articles on the Carlisle expedition or anything like on the people specifically. Okay. All right. So let's start with the call to the library. Um, you are able to get someone on the phone. It is not uh, Georgie. It is a woman, an older woman named uh, at right. Um, roll me a charm or persuasion roll or fast talk, whichever. Depending on how you want to get knowledge. Gonna, all right. We're going to, going to use charm. He's relying on his his sister's good good name in the library. Well, I guess her name is very good. Um, so she goes. She she picks up the phone. Um, yes. Hello. Hello. How oh, can I oh, help you? Oh, oh hello. Uh, Miss Miss Hat Batwood. Is, is that you? This is this is Charlie Royce, uh, Georgie's younger brother. Yes. Nice to meet you. I was just speaking. Uh, with Georgie earlier, she's just left. If you want me to see if I can find her uh, outside. Uh, oh no! Oh no! 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 Uh, she's. I probably have annoyed her enough within the past six months. She probably doesn't want to talk to me. Um, actually, I was calling in regard as to something going on at the library. Um, there was a book called um. Africa's Dark Secrets. I have one of my friends was looking for it. Uh, he was told that it had been stolen. Do you remember when that book disappeared from Harvard? Oh boy, when? Um, give me a moment. And you can hear her through the phone, she's going through uh, several filing cabinets. Uh, and when she returns, uh, I can't give you a specific day, but I can tell you the last time someone asked for it was a uh, Mr. Elias towards uh, the first week of January. Uh, so it may have gone missing around that time or no one noticed before. Um, there was something unusual about it, though. Uh, there was, it is noted that there was some sort of strange odor when it went missing, when someone went to search for it for Mr. Elias. Uh, this, oh. So it was said to be unspeakable in description, though I can't say if that is a case of of the dramatics or if it was truly uh, that bad. I, you know, you, what one of the students probably left like a sandwich on the shelf or something. Um, you you know how careless those those students can be. Uh, that is possible, of course. Uh, well, well, well. Thank you. That's that's all I was really wondering about. Uh, he's looking for a copy and uh this I, ironically the uh the, the one here in new york uh also spanished um so oh, we were, were trying to see if well we were trying to see if maybe you know you know you know how how young kids are you know when when pranks 
go awry and and it travels quickly uh but between so we were trying to see if maybe just a bunch of college kids being goofy uh but but thank you you know for for letting me know uh do, do you know when like the last time it was checked out at all Oh, let me see what I can look up. And um, as she leaves for a shorter amount of time this time, when she comes back, you know, strangely enough, it, it had not been very popular before. It was only checked out, I believe, in 22, uh, where some college students were looking into the history of Africa. And it was not exactly historically useful the but had not very many times since then, if ever. Uh, well, well, thank thank you for for that. Um, uh, I'll I'll double check with New York, see if maybe we got some some kids trying to trying to pull pranks or something. You you know how it is. Uh, but uh, uh, you know if if Georgie asked, I I didn't call. Uh, at all. I oh. think I've annoyed her a bit too much this oh. week. But um, uh, you you have been a wonderful help. All right. Well, your secret is safe with me. Don't, don't, no need to worry. Oh, thank you, thank you. You know how how her right hook is. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and he'll he'll make his goodbyes and hang up the phone. Okay. So you've hung up after your first phone call. That you wish to make a second. Uh, yes. He's just gonna make uh probably some phone calls to to the n local news news people he knows other in reporters and see if anybody has any anything uh unprinted or salacious about the uh carlisle expedition you know how rumors tend to not always make it into print make me a luck roll oh oh no oh i don't oh, like you... roll 20 right now that's that's alarming <laughs> Like extreme success is a good thing. No, no, <laughs> no. This bot is setting me up for failure. You success. <laughs> you aren't happy when you fail. This is no pleasing. You. So, uh, it takes you a few 20. phone calls, but you do find uh, someone from a smaller paper in Boston. Um, rumors that the Car the Roger Carlisle had been seen spending a lot of time with an African woman. Um, they did not have her name, but it was something that was scandalous for the family for a time. They do have a word from uh, Miss Erica Carlisle, who was reportedly not very happy about it. Um, and it said that this woman was also on the expedition, though she's not mentioned in any of the papers you have. He will make, make a note of that and then scoop to find Dr. Er, Dr. Castellano. All right. Ricardo, is there anything else that you are doing after your library search? Uh, probably just maybe a little bit of maybe a little bit of recreational reading waiting for Charlie to finish. Okay, you do a little bit did, of... Did, did, did you call uh, pro Professor... Professor Cowles? Not yet. Okay. Well, I found some interesting things out. Um, should probably uh, let Miss Mrs. Buckley and uh, Mr. Mendoza know. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go find a phone. We can make that call now. I will lead him right back to the phones. <laughs> okay. Um, are you calling uh, Professor Cowell, or are you calling uh, uh, Miss Buckley, or uh, Miss Buckley? Which one's the Harvard one again? Uh, Cowles. Cowles. Cowles is uh, Muscatonic. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not Harvard. Yes, Muscatonic Mes is the professor you had heard about with the uh, yeah, the yeah. handbill. Miss the the other one was a different person. Yeah, so we're gonna call our Muscatonic friend. See if we can get a hold of somebody. All right, All right. roll me luck for please, please. Let's see what you get. Let's see who picks up the phone. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, hard success. It rings a few times. Then, uh, hello, hello. Who, who is this? Hi, my name's 
Dr. Castellano. Yes, Dr. How oh, can I help you? Yeah, we're um, doing some reading recently about the Carlisle expedition. We're doing some research and looking to speak with somebody such as yourself who has closer ties. May know a little bit more than what I can dig up in a library. Can't hear you, Ray. Oh. It's, it's just fine. You're, you're not supposed to hear that. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. well, I am open to give you whatever it is you need to know. Uh, unfortunately, I was not consulted by the Carlisles for their trip, but if was there something specific that you wanted to know more about? I recently uh, gave a lecture on a similar topic, if uh, that what you wanted to know more about. Yeah, we want to pick your brain about the lecture. Uh, sure. Um, right, well, uh, as I was stating, there are a number of these um, strange cults, and uh, he continues to describe in incredible detail a variety of cults. It starts off very fascinating to you, Ricardo, uh, but after the 30-minute mark, it starts to become... <laughs> A very uh soft sophic sophic uh sophistry yeah, yeah. um roll me a charm roll to see if you could get him back on topic mm. charm or intimidate if you want to be trying to or make him stop talking mm. uh, let's see uh six of one uh Hmm. Oh, I think we'll try charm because I feel like if we mess up the intimidate, it's going to piss him off and he's going to go away. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe not. Failure, charm. You you attempt to cut in and get a word in, but he continues. Uh, but what you manage to pick out out of the sea of information oh. is a description of a bat cult believed to uh belong to the other people of australia um that there is some sort of that they sacrificed people they believe there'd be some sort of father of bats that would appear and that they beat people with these weird blunt objects um and then as he's going on he goes i have these uh slides of if these uh, images of men dressed formally and informally that I would not mind sharing with you if you can make a, a trip to uh, the university. I'm afraid I won't be, uh, be in New York again for quite some time. Uh, it was part of the reason why I was interested in Mr. Elias's books on the subject, you see. Oh, indeed. If... That would be, it's, 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 it sounds fantastic. Um, I'm I'm glad we spoke first, though. It is a little bit of a hike. It is a journey, but there's nothing that shouldn't be done for for knowledge and opportunities to know more information. Of course. Of course. Well, uh, I, 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 I'll have to get with my colleagues and um, uh, about when they would like to make that trip, but I'm sure that they would like to come I was seeing we can all, you know, talk about that and perhaps other things. Of course, uh, let me know in advance and I can clear a bit of my schedule for you and I will have some tea prepared and we can discuss some of the finer details of some of these, these strange cults. There are rumors of one to a serpent as well. That was very fascinating. And uh, you get the feeling he is about to start off into another another tangent uh dr castellano uh, but so so what are you doing oh that that sounds lovely thank you very much doctor um i i i, I have someone knocking at my door I've, that i have to take but uh we'll, I, I look forward to speaking with you more on these matters charlie's gonna lean back in his chair and just like tap against like the bookshelf he's sitting near a little bit to help with the ruse 
Roll, a, roll me a luck check. See if he actually stops talking. Or if he just continues. Continues on. Could, could, could he have, Wait, you know, like advantage or something just, with my little help? Just keeps talking. Just keeps talking. Almost as if he didn't hear you. That was just hang up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ricardo's just like... <laughs> Yeah, so I'll... he'll probably hey. keep talking. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. It has been a it has been a, a true pleasure. Like, <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll Sounds say like it he took you a while. Much. <laughs> <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll say it took you around forty five minutes to get the information you needed uh, through the the long winded professor. <laughs> but while Ricardo is safely trying to help himself. Uh, Florence and uh, Jasper, <clears throat> how are things going for you two? Well, Florence is immediately walking in the door and hang and getting her shawl and, and outerwear removed and, and hung. Um, and she looks uh, to Jasper and says, would you like a bite to eat before you go upstairs? Yes, it would be nice. Okay. And she'll have her servants prepare a... a, a moderate luncheon type setting um and florence say i'll join you in just a moment and she's going to go to the sitting room where there's a telephone and she will call her son stewart right and he does answer after the fifth or sixth ring of course he hello does. stewart it's your mother yes yes okay, um, i'll be of service <laughs> yes, you can be of service. There is a poor innocent man in Sing Sing about to be murdered for murders he didn't commit. Mother, they are all poor innocent people. No, we... they, this one really is. He's been set up. I am sure your wisdom is great, but they will all tell you they've been set up or the police were after them or i haven't spoken to them. the man i have found out through other avenues he was set up and do I'm not sure. besmirch my intelligence where do you think you got your brains from of course take the case appeal buy him some time Get your people looking into this. Roll this will make persuasion. your career. <laughs> roll, roll either a persuade or intimidate. Roll. Okay. Let's see what I got of either. But bonus, because that's a, that's his mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like bonus does really mom, work. No. Like uh, you know, you know. I think mom voice counts as a bonus. <laughs> I totally brought out the mom voice. Okay. <laughs> Sure, you can have a bonus die. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see what I have for persuade. Okay, we're going to go with intimidate. I actually have more intimidate than persuade. <laughs> nope, that's a failure. I'm going to push it. All right, well, roll with the bonus die first. Oh, bonus. Okay. All right, well, this will be a failure. Um, yeah. All right. You can. You're welcome to attempt to, to push it. If you would like. Nope. I failed it. Look, if you don't take this case, this man's going to die. And he's going to die for murders he didn't commit. Because the mur a, a murder just like it by the same people that actually did it just happened. And he's in Sing Sing, so he couldn't have done it. He, there's no answer for a moment. <laughs> this seems important to you. Yes, it is. A friend of mine was the most recent murder victim. And this guy that's in Sing Sing didn't commit the murder. All right. I will take time out of my schedule to see what can be done. I if will pay you... for the costs. Of course, but you will need to give up a larger portion of the estate on the off chance that this turns out to be worthless. Done. All right. And he does agree. Is there anything she else? She didn't say how much of a larger portion she'd give up, but she'll give up more. 
we'll see how that goes. We'll see uh, how that goes. So. Okay. And she says, thank you. It's a shame I have to browbeat you to do something ethical. And then she hangs up. Right. Um, <laughs> and then she will um, go and have lunch with Jasper. <clears throat> All right. My son's Jasper. going to take the case. Well, that's good. I had already yeah. assumed that he would. You are his mother. <laughs> Yes. Jasper, what what were you up to while uh, Florence was on the phone? I was going to sit in my room in the dark and think about Jackson. And I don't know, reach out into the void, but but more of like Jackson, what are you doing? What did you what did you find? Sort of like meditating on that. I'm opening my brain. For something to come in, really. Okay, make a well. If you if you are in Florence's house, the, this is great. <laughs> this is how we die. <laughs> you are calling to the mythos. Make me a Cthulhu mythos roll. Let's see if cool. something happens. Good thing I have five points in that. Hard success, baby. I don't know what that means. Sometimes, like, a success is a bad thing, but it's a hard success this time around. All right. Take a moment and you reach out to something, to the darkness, to things beyond your understanding. And as you do so, you feel something respond. And as you open your eyes there's a figure standing across the room from you as you look into this person's eyes you recognize them a man you haven't seen since Peru before he disappeared beyond the world wait to tell Ricardo eye. Only his eyes are different. They are orbs of darkness. And as he stands in front of you, he reaches out and places a card in your hand. And this card seems to be made out of stardust. And on the card, you see the name Silas and Kwane. And then he's gone. I would probably try to speak to him if he's not like if he's not going to talk back that's fine but um I would probably speak to him and go Gus I can't wait to tell Ricardo are you okay and if he doesn't respond and just gives me the card that's fine yeah. but that's what I'll be doing he doesn't say anything cool And I if cell phones that... were a thing in this, uh, in this time, uh, Jasper's first action would be to take to text Ricardo. But unfortunately, cell phones are are not a thing in 1920s, so I can't text Ricardo that I was able to talk to his long lost boyfriend. All right, well, send me, send me a telegram. Well, Jasper attempts to. That's why you attempt to send telegrams from. Florence's house. Uh, but we are going to go on a break. Um, and then we'll continue this story in about 15 minutes. So if you're already enjoying it, then I hope you continue to enjoy what comes next because I can't wait to find out. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our Call of the Cthulhu campaign. As we have returned, or as we return to our adventures, you all have just taken the time to reconvene and to share the knowledge that you've gained. 
Um, after that, your day was relatively uneventful. Um, on the next day it was Sunday morning. And if any of you wish to go to mass, there are plenty of churches to, to choose from. Um, uh, but as Sunday comes to a close, you all have made arrangements to meet with the New York Times reporter at about, we'll say 11 a.m. the next day. Mm -hmm. So, as you all awaken, are you all going over uh, together or are you going separately? Hmm. Well, that seems good. Sure, Florence could pick up others from their residences on the way. All right. In that case, you all are very, uh, very quickly able to compile into the to the car, and uh, the I don't know what name you all would get the, for your investigations, but you are all together. Um, uh, you all take a short trip down to West Forty Third Street, and you find the New York Times headquarters. As you enter, you find it is a buzz with activity as reporters are running back and forth discussing news as it's happening from both all over the world as well as uh, downtown. Um, and in the middle of this chaos, uh, you find an office dedicated to a Miss Schosenberg. Unlike the chaos around <clears throat> her, her wow, place she's not is in the neat. pit. She actually has an office. She is very impressive. Mm-hmm. Amongst her neat and or amongst the chaos, she is a beacon of order. And as she sees you, she smiles and gestures you over. And we go into her office. Hello, I hope your weekend was better. It was as well as it could be. Thank you, Miss Schossenberg. Uh, first, allow me to give my condolences to your friend. Um, from what I've heard, Mr. Elias was a colorful individual. He was, but he was a good friend. Oh, that is a lot more than most have in this day and age. Um, Sadly, very true. Well, we are here to give statement and yes. you can make note of my name. I am Florence Buckley. Oh, and she does pull out a, a journalist pad and begin to scribble some things <laughs> down. Uh, interesting. So first, allow me to ask, how familiar are you all with uh, the other eight murders? Found out about them after our friend was murdered. Not very familiar, to be honest. Well, the the biggest issue, at least as far as I see it, is the boys in blue aren't exactly good at working together. Each of the first few bodies were found in different precincts, which made it difficult to connect them by the time that they were connected. And she does place a, uh, she reaches into her desk and pulls out a, a file. Um, I will warn you, some of the images are rather ghastly to look at, um, but... As you see, there is no unifying characteristics amongst them, whether it be age, financial status. Uh, the only connecting thread I've been able to see is that they've all frequented Harlem recently, which, considering how popular the area is after dark, isn't too helpful. Uh, Mr. Roberson, if you've met him or Captain Oberson has not exactly been helpful. It was he who arrested Hilton, but well, he has ended the investigation because according to him, it would be a waste of resources. So. Yes, well, obviously, since there's been another murder identical to these and Mr. Hilton Adams is currently in Sing Sing, it's not physically possible that Mr. Hilton Adams could have committed that murder. Oh, I agree, Keeper, of course. Keeper, um, in these pictures, do we have the bodies of them dead as well? Yes, they are all similar to what you saw with uh, do Mr. Elias. they have Elias. the forehead? Yes, they do, do they have, have that same image carved into their, to their foreheads. And you see it's both men and women of varying 
uh, social statuses. <clears throat> um, from what I can tell, he's going to argue that it's a different case or perhaps someone he was working with. So I don't think this will be enough to get Mr. Hilton out of his situation. Well, Mr. Adams now has a good lawyer. Uh, I had not heard of him receiving new counsel. Just happened over the weekend. As I, I said, see. I'm Florence Buckley, Justice Buckley's widow. I, I, I see. Well, I assume you would be all right if I were to write a piece about this situation. Absolutely. Because it seems that um, certain individuals in uniforms are not doing their job well, I concur. And you see for a moment, the there is a look of surprise before she very quickly controls her expressions. And that we agree People are that. being murdered in this city, ritualistically it appears, with these symbols carved into their foreheads. And obviously they have imprisoned the wrong man because the murders keep happening. I agree. I cannot tell if Captain Robeson's work is due to incompetence or willful neglect, but... Either way, he's not doing his job. If you all are interested in doing what you can, I can arrange a conversation with uh, Miss Millie Adams, as she has been very serious about trying to free her husband, but... There's the, there's so only so much she can do. I, I, I did speak with Mrs. Adams uh, earlier. Uh, I see. And do uh, you have some? Do you have any opinions on the woman? She seems like a wife who misses her husband, who's been wrongly convicted. Um, she did make a mention, uh, Miss Miss Schossenberg of the Juju House. Uh, you're you're from New York. Uh, do you, do you know anything of that place? Yes, I've been around once or twice trying to look into things. It is a curio's shop. Uh, it's run by a Mister Nkwane. Uh, they sell. Things that are supposedly from Africa, though I'm afraid I couldn't what? tell Do you, you if they're his real. First name? Um, and she reaches down and goes through a bundle of notebooks, and you see her just quickly paging through Silas, I believe. Uh, I give everybody a look. Is there? Uh, uh, Do you with... believe him involved in? What's going on? I have a uh, hunch. But I wouldn't uh, quote me just yet. Yes, don't okay. need to report Miss things without evidence. Miss, Miss, Miss Schossenberg, uh, which one of the murders was the first one? And then uh, she like, what, what order did over. they go in? And she replaces them, and you see the first one is an older uh, African-American woman. Then after that, it's um, uh, a white woman who looks to be maybe in her mid-twenties, though it's hard to tell. And then from there, the other, other seven are laid out. Um, well, I can reach out to Miss Adams to organize a meeting uh, with the, the four of you. Shouldn't take too long, maybe a day or two. That is fine. We'll be happy to speak with her. Get her side of things. Um, okay. It is very important to us for our friend that the murderers responsible 
are brought to justice. And that some innocent man doesn't get executed as a scapegoat. Of course, I will, well, I will continue to do what I can. If you come across some information that may uh, be useful, I may be able to make sure it is shared in the right places or uh, makes the front pages if you need additional assistance. I know uh, the police are not exactly forthright without fire lit under them. We are on the same page. Oh, I, I had not expected you to be so interested, to be honest. I'm thankful to have been wrong. <laughs> well, <clears throat> friend is very important to us. And justice maybe, is important. We may be able to speak with Miss Adams and Mrs. Adams to arrange for a meeting with you all and Hilton and Sing Sing if you'd be interested in hearing from him directly. That would be very good. <clears throat> we went to the police to try to request that and they were non-committal. But now that we've ensured he has representation, I'm sure Stuart Buckley will be more inclined to allow it. All right, I I will definitely see what I can do. Do you have a, a phone number or a telegraph location? She, she hands a card. You can reach me at that number. Okay. And a message can be left. All right, I will do what I can. Thank you. Uh, so will we. Miss Schossenberg, I, I do apologize. Um, is there any way I can get a copy of these files of of, of the the murders? If yeah, I think I can arrange for that. Give me a few days to get uh, proper copies made, and I'll have them uh, sent to you, or you can pick them up. No, oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. I can come pick them up. I would. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, hate staying with my aunt while I'm in town. I would hate for her to um, open my mail. Um. <clears throat> that could be ghastly, but of course, I will have it ready for you in, let's say, three days' time. That would work. Hey, well, I am glad to be able to work with you all. If you need to get word to me, you can I'll leave it with any of the junior reporters here if I'm not available. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Miss Schlossenberg. Appreciate the time. Of course. Thank you. All right. Are you all leaving now? Yep. Um, Florence will offer to take them all to lunch somewhere nice before we have to go to the will reading. You are able to find any of New York's fine dining experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and if you always have a conversation while at lunch, you may. If not, skip forward a bit of time. <sighs> When Ms. Schausenberg gets her story, it's going to light a fire under the police. A justice's widow is calling them out on not doing their job. Welcome to New York to those of you who haven't been here before. Uh, my, my family, well, my, my, mother's side of the family is from from new york so uh my aunt is well acquainted with the nypd mm -hmm. and their uh, uh occasional lack of uh moving my my thing on it is is i wonder how they're choosing the victims i can't help but notice that the first one was a woman and from one of the the 
uh, rumors from one of the, my r reporter contacts was that uh, Mr. Carlisle was spending time with a woman in Africa. She wasn't listed on the expedition, and I'm kind of wondering if that's tied back to any of this. Perhaps Carlisle had a lover. Was the woman Caucasian or African American or African descent? Uh, uh, the woman was African, evidently. Uh, but the woman in the very... photo was she? Yes, she was as well. Older woman. Hmm. Usually, first victim, there's some significance there. Yeah. Unless they're trying to bury who it is, and it could be any of the others. Maybe she gave Carlisle secrets she wasn't supposed to. That's what I'm thinking of. Plus, plus, uh, uh, Dr. Castellano, didn't uh, Professor Cowell say we should stop by Miskatonic at some point? He had some slides or something. Yeah, you wanted to share some slides uh, on the subjects we were discussing regarding the cults, uh, along with, you know, being able to talk directly about any other number of things he might have. Mm hmm. That's a good idea. Maybe he might have a, a photo of the expedition. We can see if there's a photo of this lady. And if he doesn't have that, he can, may have at least some more insight into the cults. Mm -hmm. Because I am worried that this curio shop <clears throat> is a front. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they're, if they're authentic African curios, they might be getting them through the importer that will turn a blind eye for money. Well, what wasn't there amongst those letters uh, something of the importers with Mr. Nakame's mm -hmm. name on it? Mm hmm. Yeah. So they're well, bringing in objects that likely name. wouldn't clear customs. Apologies. It's also the same name that Gus, I don't know if you believe it, gave me. Yeah. Well, his name's been yeah. popping up all over. We all saw him disappear into the hole. It's believable that I could have reached him. Stranger things have happened, so I, I believe that you saw him. Well, I know you weren't drinking that day, so maybe you did. Hmm. Use the mask again, Jasper. You can rest assured, Florence, I do not drink. I have I mean, never witnessed you doing that, so I believe that, too. Tipsy, but never because of a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I think getting more information on cult activity from the professor would be a good idea. As if Mr. Nakame is involved in the cult, we could at least maybe get some how they're picking people, unless it's just exactly. people who stick their, their nose, nose in into their things. Business. Right. And I also believe as long as we are doing ancillary investigation instead of direct, we might stay off their radar a little longer. Agreed. Eventually, we will have to catch a tiger by its tail. But not yet. Let's hope the doctor can recover more before we do. Indeed. I would like to pursue this uh, adventure with him around. Yes. Oh, here's our lunch. Enjoy, everyone. Thank you. It's one of my favorite places. All right. As you all settle in into a delightful lunch, we'll say, as you're finishing up, you've got about 45 minutes before you are due to meet Mr. Ramsey for the will reading. Uh, are you doing anything before you head over? Uh, 
I really don't have anything. All right. Me neither. All right, then you all meet him bright and early in the afternoon um, as you are led into his office um, in Harlem. You find Carlton, who is an African-American man, a bit wiry in a very nice suit. Uh, you can see he's a bundle of nervous energy as he smiles at you all. Um, once you close the door, he steps over to a cabinet, and as he opens it, he pulls out a bottle of a bourbon, and he places it down. Uh, you all don't mind if I make a bit of something to calm my nerves? Please, why are you so nervous? Oh, Mr. Jackson was a wonderful person, but his work was difficult. You have no idea how hard it is to receive telegrams in the middle of the night, only to be told you need to prepare documents so he can enter Shanghai or London or to get him out of trouble. Oh, he was, let's just say, he was not a easy person to follow. Hmm. Well, do, do settle your nerves. Uh, okay. Jasper smiles at the um, mention of Jackson's adventures and the type of person that he is and uh, silently agrees that that is Action Jackson. Yes. Well, once again, I offer my condolences to you all. I uh, I had heard he was in Shanghai. What what was that at Little Adventure about? Did you have to get him out of trouble there too? Oh, briefly. He mentioned looking into some cult. Truth, I've always been avoidant of the more esoteric nature of the things he looked into. Uh, but he did have a bit of an issue coming in and out of the city. The British aren't exactly very good with people, but we managed to take care of it. You know, a little bit of money here and a little bit of money there. Make sure people aren't always too interested in asking too many questions. Money does make the world go round. That it does. That it does. <clears throat> well... <clears throat> I'm not sure if you're aware, but Elias visited me uh, the day before his demise, and he was a bit afraid, to say the least. Uh, he didn't tell me anything explicitly, but it was clear he was afraid that something or someone had caught up to him. Hmm. Well, allow me to suppose we should start with the reading of his will. And I'm surprised his niece isn't here. Oh, she is. And uh, he stands up and he guess he goes over to the door. You see him go to knock on it and he shakes his head and just opens it. And you see there is a young woman standing there who is very quickly uh, straightening the dress she was wearing. And she goes... You, I was letting you know that you had visitors, but it appears they've already arrived. And uh, Ramsey looks at her and goes, If you want to be here, you can. Though Jackson does not want you involved in the more difficult things, I don't think there's anything too unbecoming here. Do you, do all, do you all mind? Not at all. She's family to him. And uh, he reaches under his desk and he pulls out a, a small sheet of a paper. All right. Um, by now, you know that all I really left you in a whole heap of trouble. If I was still around to have opinions on the matter, I would understand if you decided to walk away from it all. Hell, if I'm dead right now, it's a good indication I should have done the same. How would you know me too well, and I know you too well, if you were the kind of person that always did the reasonable thing, we wouldn't be such good friends. 
You have been there when I needed you in the past, and I hope you will be again, even if it's too late to save me. I've been pulling threads all over the world, and while most of them are still unraveling, I think I'm onto something big. Carlton and Jonah can fill in most of the details for you. I've left some of my papers and notes with them. It should help you work out which hornet's nest you need to poke next. I trust you to bring my killers to justice, of course. I'm assuming I was murdered. It will be just plain embarrassing if I was run over by a trolley car. Follow my investigations to its bloody end and seek out the truth. I'm not asking you to finish my books, of course. But all none of you can write worth a damn. Your friend always... Jackson. I always appreciated his candor. He was a charming fellow. Yes, he was. Too bad he didn't get to meet you, Charlie. You could write. You could write circles around him. <laughs> and I feel that with love. I you love know, it's, it's, it's it's not it's not bad writing i mean georgie's pretty good at writing uh you know all of her thesis and papers and stuff but like <laughs> i i must admit i must admit my my article on the burglary at the bennett's was not the best work it, it was very slapdash but i will admit to that openly so you have papers for us Yes, um, I believe uh, Kensington has most of the stuff in his room, but I must ask you before we go further, do you all intend to follow the path that he has so graciously begun for you? Of course. We are not prone to doing the reasonable thing, as he said. That's why we're right. friends. In that case, he has made it that I am the full power of attorney over his assets. As a result, he has authorized me to make them available to you for any expenses you need. These will include uh, medical care, travel costs, things directly related to uh, your investigations. If you need more specialized individuals, he has given me a list of people uh, that he has made good with in his travels. I can connect them to you if, uh, for whatever reason, you find yourselves separated or split up. I can also coordinate conversation between you. Uh, How would you do that? We have a few connections, uh, Mr. Elias, through an organization uh, called the, the Midnight Hat. They have offices throughout many countries, not all of them. Mm. And I can make sure you all are able to at least exchange correspondence without too many difficulties. Excellent. We will make sure you all are understanding the gravity of the situation. He, he, this arrangement has left him with around $50,000 to spend on whatever you may need. Uh, if you all do decide to leave the United States, you, I will be able to uh, pay for things, but you will need to offer uh, itemized documents on what you spent and the like, but it is all yours for the use. But do you have any questions? That can be rather shocking to, to hear from most. I should say I shouldn't be surprised he acquired that much in assets. I am a little surprised, though. He was gifted for finding a unique thing. I am told Obviously. that I told you all were with him when he traveled through Peru. That was Yes, we were. 
It was not a small portion of what he found. There were quite a few collectors who were interested in those artifacts. Indeed. I sold a few of mine, too. But it's good to know we have various benefits for pursuing his investigations. But first, we are resolute in ensuring his murderers are brought to justice. Have you begun investigating the Carlisle expedition? In a way. In a way. We are not traveling yet. We're, we've reviewed the documents. It's very concerning what's going on right here at home. And there are some things we need to look into. Right. Should you need me to make introductions with um, the Carlisle estate, I can do so. I know the uh, Erica Carlisle was a lawyer. Just, he is a difficult man, but reasonable. I may be able to arrange a meeting between you all. That would be perfect, actually. I will reach out to them and see in what time or what schedule works. If there is anything else you all need, please do not be afraid to ask. Anyone in specific we should be asking about the Carlisle expeditions? Just to see if there's any ties to what's going on currently in New York? Well, for, for the top of my head, uh, Erica may know more. She was, um, as they say, hellbent on finding the people who harmed her brother, though she has since retreated to her more business issues. Uh, from what I understand, she had been instrumental in making sure the murderers were brought to justice. Perhaps she knows more or has some information that may be of use. Absolutely. Very good, very good. Thank you. Mr. Ramsey. This is no problem. Just a small bit that I can do, so I will do it as well as I can. And Florence looks over to Willa and says, Miss Sly, I am sorry for the loss of your uncle. Thank you. Um, if you do find out who is responsible, I would be very thankful. Right, I can't offer anywhere near uh, such a financial sum, but if there's... Don't worry about it. He was our friend. There was, if there's anything I can do to help you, please don't be afraid to let me know. What sort of work do you do, hon? Oh, I'm starting to, well, I'm currently working for Mr. Ramsey as a as this receptionist, but I am working, or planning on working in the finances. Mm. Uh, they're working on for Wall Street soon, so, you know, hopefully things will be, my fortunes will, will change, and I will be able to provide a little more incentive for other people. Wonderful. I wish you the best with that ambition. Thank you. And... With that, Florence will get up and prepare her stuff, her stuff to leave. <clears throat> okay. With the will read, you all have the rest of today to yourselves. We'll say it's, let's say it's around 4.35 o'clock. I would like to try and retrace Jackson's last steps. 
like last stage, sort of like what I know and just sort of like go to the same places that he went to. If I could, if I could like just try and get in that mindset of what Jackson was going during that day. Or okay. what I know. Um, sure. Make me an intelligence roll. Intelligence. Where are you? There you are. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Like, yeah. You do recall some of what he described or what others have told you. Um, and you were, you, you start with, um, well, if you're, did you only want to do the day of or that week or? More of like that day of just to see what he saw that day, the day he passed away. So you do know that he had spent, he have came to visit, um, Mr. Ramsey at some point mm -hmm. in the day. You do know that he would have gone to the hotel as well. You don't know too much about what he did in between those two events, though, I don't believe. I would probably just walk around from one uh, location to the other very slowly, just to see if anything, like, sort of jumps out at me, or just I'm wasting the day trying to see if I could figure out the kind of mindset he was in. Sure. I think so while well, Jasper is doing that, what about the other three? I think Ricardo is going to take a little bit of time to uh, let his brain rest after doing the library work earlier. There will be more time later, but he's going to Relax and do some uh, do some reading of whatever uh, fiction he may have picked up at the library. All right. Okay. Well, that leaves Charlie and Florence. Florence is going to ask Charlie if Charlie would like to join her to go to the import company. Oh. Miss Buckley, I think you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go look in and see what they've been turning a blind eye to. Yeah, I'm kind of curious on who else's name's going to pop up in there. Mm hmm And Florence does have the card with Silas's name on it with her. All right, so you are making your <laughs> way down to Emerson Import. Um, make me a luck roll. Um, whichever, which either one of you has the lowest luck makes the roll. I have 38. What do you have? 46. Okay, I will roll. I got a hard success. Yeah. All right. We're so not dead yet. As you, not dead yet. <laughs> you make your way along the edge of the Hudson River, just beyond Hell's Kitchen, where you find a long, narrow building with loading docks on each end. Um, as you can, as you make your way along the front, are you going in or are you trying to, uh, look around? Are you taking, how are you proceeding with this? Want to divide and conquer? I go in and talk while you go investigate. <laughs> or do you, do you want to go talk first and then investigate or investigate and then talk? I think a good old divide and conquer. Okay. If you talk with the people inside, I, I can go see if I can find the people outside moving the boxes. Yeah. Okay. We will do that. All right. And then uh, you all split up. Mm-hmm. So let's start with, um, let's start with Florence. Okay. So, so you make your way forward. Uh, are you knocking on the door or are you? How are you going to get to? It's a attention? business. It should the door should be open if they're open. So she's just going to go in. Walking in, as you enter, you find it is mostly empty at this point. Though you can see, uh, kind of in the back room, there seems to be a man who is fiddling with something on a shelf. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. 
Yes, one moment. I will Th I'm coming. Thank you. Thank you. You see him push the, the box back and as he walks forward. Um, he seems to be an, an older man, maybe in his early 50s. Um, white, kind of dirtyish hair and a very nice suit. Though as you look at it, as he approaches, you can see parts of it are starting to fray at the hinges. And as he looks at you all... Now, you... Florence has done business with this company before. Does she recognize this individual? I would say yes. I would say you've probably met Arthur Emerson at least once or twice. Yes. As the, the owner of the business. Oh, Mr. Emerson. Glad I caught you before you closed for the day. Oh, Miss Mrs. Buckley, nice to meet you. I was not aware we had something coming in for you. No, not at present. I just have some questions for you because, well... You know, I kind of keep my ear to the ground for things, um, and I've understood that some recent items were brought in, and possibly they might have, you know, you know how you do things. For me, I think you might have done that for them, too. And I, I, I'm trying to get a little bit of information on it because it's something I might wish to purchase, but I want to make sure that, you know, get my records in in line to make sure I can authenticate and truly evaluate the item before I buy it. So knowing its origin, where it came from, would be important. All right, well, it is, I don't make a business of telling other people about other people's belongings, but... Florence will say, would you prefer check or cash? Roll at me or persuade check with the <laughs> Can <bonus> I? Die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My persuade sucks. I wish I could use charm. <laughs> sure, you could do charm. I love Okay. <laughs> I love charm. With a bonus die? Yep. Right, well, the first Didn't one help. was better. The first yeah. one was better. Well, I suppose it would, a, a little bit of information couldn't hurt. And she takes out the card and says, most recent shipments to this gentleman, please. And puts a wad of cash on the counter. Oh, Mr. Nukwane. Um, he wanted a few uh, curios from a man, uh, uh, Aja Singh, I believe. Um, I didn't, I'm not entirely sure what was in his package. He, I mean, being honest, Aja there's a bit on... Singh, you said. S-I-N-G-H? Yes, yes, that is correct. That is an Asian name, is it not? Yes, I believe so. Um, do you have... Mbasa. Uh, do, do you have the uh, the manifest? Where it came from? Um, no, not entirely. Uh, they are... Truth be told, Mr. Nokwane gives me, uh, he has the way people say, uh, he makes my skin crawl. I've learned to not ask very many questions uh, about whatever it is he has shipped in. He doesn't do it very often, I can tell you that. And oh. This oh. curio's shop doesn't seem to be anything of important outside of the few who enjoy that sort of memorabilia i guess hmm all right well thank you so much for your help i appreciate it of course because uh, if an if an item is claiming to be you know of certain origin but it's coming from a different location altogether well that just may not be authentic might it Perhaps <laughs> you, you you are the the second person to to ask about that particular. Oh, who else asked? Uh, Mr. Jackson Elias. Uh, he was hmm. curious about it. I believe he wanted to uh, go to the Juju House to speak to him. So perhaps you two can go together. Perhaps we can. Perhaps we can. Um, but do not mention to anyone I was here asking about it. You know, you know how we do. All right. Sure. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Emerson. You have a good evening. Well, very welcome. And then Florence will turn and leave. Charlie, Charlie, how are you going about your information, your investigations? Um, he's going to take a little bit of a poke around, look and see, but he's really looking to see if he could maybe find, like, one of the workers who might be a little bit more willing to talk about what goes on in the back end. Okay. So if you're, so are you trying, are you trying to sneak into this back area or are you just trying to just walk in and just see if you find anybody to talk to? Just trying to, just trying to walk in, see if you can see anybody. All right, make me a luck roll. See if anybody's still around back here. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's a whole failure. Look around, but it seems that everyone's gone home for the evening. Well, now it is time to do a poke around because nobody's going to be out here looking. <laughs> All right, roll me a stealth roll. Let's see if we can successfully get Ty oh, without being oh. noticed. Can she oh. get a bonus die because I was distracting the uh, owner? Sure. Thank you. Okay, cool, 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 cool. That's the wrong button. Move. Oh, ha, hard success. A nimble and quiet as a cat as you are able to, to crawl. You find a spot behind a few boxes that allows you to get into the, to the, the actual loading area. Mm -hmm. And as mm -hmm. you go looking around, give me a spot of hidden real to see if you find anything. Oh, this reminds me of being in France. Another hard success. All right. You make your way through the shipping areas, and as you're looking, you don't see anything directly related to what you're searching for. But as you're about to leave, you see on the ground is a torn piece. It looks like it came off of a box, and you can see a portion of the address and the name. And the first part of the name is Silas. And then I would say you recognize the first part of the address, which is one ransom court. Mm -hmm. um, um, Gonna do a scoop and pick and keep walking. Sure. You are, if you are able to scoop and pick up and without anyone noticing you. Um, uh, you finish kind of a circuit around the loading docks area. You think you, you there isn't anything else in here for you to find. However, if you would like, you can attempt to get into the offices, but that will require you to make another roll. How long would it have taken him to, to do the outside? Because I'm trying to time it to see if Florence would still be distracting the owner. I would say around 15 to 20 minutes. Um, you you did not add probably how long probably don't have there, enough so. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll he'll kind of look at his watch and go. Yeah, probably not. Flip back All out. Right. All right. You manage to get out safe and sound, and uh, the two of you are able to reconvene uh, in the car. Outside of the import, <laughs> we get in the car, and we're just heading back to Florence's place, or to drop you off at your aunt's place. And she says, do you find anything? He'll pull out the piece of paper because he stuck it in his vest and hand mm -hmm. it over. And she says, well, I got that the last shipment he got came from Aja Singh, S-I-N-G-H. Well, that sounds, what, in India, M Middle East somewhere? Yeah, India. Yeah. Possible. Um other surrounding nations perhaps yeah that's what i'm thinking right there well that's yeah. another person to look into mm -hmm. uh looks like someone dropped this off a box when he was there so it's, it's getting some shipments in there wasn't anybody there looks like they were out for the day yeah um mr emerson did tell me that um mr Nakwane doesn't get shipments very often and as far as he was aware, it's just curios. Hmm. But he also told me that Silas makes his skin crawl. So he's up to no good, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, how old does the piece of paper look? Does it look like a little faded, a little sun-worn, 
imagine would, would it be snowing outside. It's definitely water damaged, though. I would say roll me a, let's say an appraise roll. It need oh, a hard. No. I would like see. to do that too while I look at it. Gonna need a hard I, roll to I, see. If I will allow uh, Florence to make that roll. Yeah, because I I've got that kind of stacked. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got a hard success on that. I'm looking at it. You think it's been at least two weeks. So it's, it's harder to be precise, more precise than that. I, I can't be 100% sure, but I think that's been out at least a week or two. So it's not like okay. he's getting shipments routinely all the time. Looks like he got something in recently. Yeah. Well, I did ask, you know, when I asked, I asked about the most recent shipment because I told him my story was that I had heard about an object that I might be interested in purchasing, but I needed to authenticate its origin. And um, so I was able to get that information. He also said that um, Jackson Elias had come in asking about shipments for Silas and was going to the Juju house. To talk to him. That name keeps popping up. Looks like we're gonna have to eventually make a make a trip down there. Perhaps you and uh, Miss Mr. Mendoza could. You've got that wealthy socialite look. You could pretend to be looking for. Curios. I worry that's one of the last things he did. So do I. Well. I'd say we should probably talk to the professor at the Miskatonic. I think we need to do that before we approach. Absolutely. And look into Mr. Singh. I could... You know, uh, I'll probably, if it's all right with you, stay the night at your place. I could make a phone call, see what we can find about Mr. Singh. Sure, sure. You're welcome. Uh, I don't really want my aunt involved in too much. She's gone through enough already in the past few years. Of course. Of course, you're welcome. I I have plenty of spare rooms. So... (laughs) (laughs) At least least find if Mr. Singh's a good guy or a bad guy, or if we can lean on him in some way for some information. Okay. So we'll go back to Florence's house so that Charlie can make a call. All right. Return to the Buckley Estate. Charlie... What phone call would you like to make? Uh, making a phone call to some of his reporter contacts, just asking, the, especially the ones who deal with, like, uh, more of the art world. Or so international like, trade. International trade, like, those ones that focus on, like, um, those sorts of places, just to see if, he, if any of them have heard of Aja Singh. He's trying to see if he's maybe, like, a a dealer of antiquities or something along those lines. All right. Make me a luck rope. Ooh. Okay. We got this. We got this. Yeah, no, that's, that's not happening. Check in with your, your contacts, but nobody really seems to know much about Mr. Singh. Or Asha Singh. going to have to use Ricardo's knowledge of the library. Ricardo! <laughs> Running yes. down the hall. Uh, you're good with research. I mean, yes, it's nature of the job. Uh, d- d- during, uh, y- d- do you want to do some research to see if we could find someone named Aja Singh? Possibly dealing with antiquities, dealings, art stuff. Uh, maybe, maybe Jasper could help out with that because I feel like he's probably more qualified about art and in and, and international dealings. And he's also very wealthy, so I'm, I'm assuming he has bought art and stuff before. Hi. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, he puts. Uh... He puts his book down that he's been reading. He's like, no time like the present. Let's go. Um, I would say most of the libraries would be closed. Oh. This oh. 
I mean, yeah, we're it's probably seven, be past seven thirty at night. Most most libraries would. I mean, that's just closed. a suggestion. You could break into a library if you like. Bernardo does not have the skill set for that. <laughs> unless, unless his skill set was throwing a brick through the window. But that's not something Ricardo would think to do. He's not that desperate to do the research. Very right to the second. All right. All right, Jasper, is there anything you're doing before day is wrapped up? Other than walking around and trying to feel the steps or seeing whatever comes out at me, uh, that's all I'm doing is Make me a luck roll, Jasper. All right. Uh... Actually, before you do, would Jasper go to Harlem? If he believes that Jackson uh, went to Harlem at that time, yeah, absolutely. Okay. As you are walking down a sidewalk somewhere in Harlem, you feel the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Can I get a spot hidden cool. roll, please? All right. Not great. As you are walking, you make a few turns down some darker streets. And as you do so, you hear something behind you. It sounds like metal scraping against metal. Can I have you make a dodge roll, please? Sure. Uh... Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I did oh, not dodge. Oh, no. <laughs> so the day 100... Korea, is that the damage? Uh, you know what? I'm going to push that. Oh, okay. Okay. And see if I die. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Hard freaking success here for good old Jasper Mendoza. Okay, I have to. I have to consult the the book on this. Consult the oracle. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a specific difficult uh, scenario that I had not expected to happen today. Not only did you dodge it, but you dodged it, caught the object, and threw it back. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. That might be an extreme success Fair. scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you get an extreme oh, success, I, they flip I a cartwheel. Can I spend the luck roll to make it into an extreme success? Maybe not because it's a, it's a pushed roll, but I kind of want to do it. Uh, I would say you could do that, sure. Let's so make that an extreme success. Okay. I'll make it... So, I'll extreme is four, so you just need to spend one luck. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. With a extreme success, in that case, you... Duck just as something slams into the brick wall next to you. And as you kind of step away, you see there is a man, dark skin with a bandage wrapped around his head with a red piece of fabric extending from the top of it. And you recognize not the person, but this get up as the same one Warned by the people that attacked Jackson Elias. I am gonna kick his ass or attempt to, or I'm gonna shoot at him, whatever way. I'm going to basically attack this man. Uh, in right. some, also self defense, I'm gonna shoot him. Let's shoot, sh let, uh, because my strength isn't that strong, but I'm gonna shoot him with my handgun. Can I do that? Because my brawl compared to my hand, my handgun is really small. Um. I would say you can definitely shoot for now. Uh, handguns will work in this range, so go for it. Okay. 
That fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna push it. Push you brought it a gun really to good. a knife fight. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm gonna push it. Go for it. Oh! <laughs> and you know what? I'm gonna spend one more luck point to make that into a hard success. All right, because uh, he also built a hard success. So you pull out your gun, and as you go, you hit him in the side, somewhere around uh, the, the left side of his stomach as he swings. And as you can see it clearly now, it's this weird blade that has it. It's almost like a machete, although it's kind of bent at the top. And as he swings it at you, I would say he'll miss, I believe players win ties. So roll the damage from your weapon to see how much you hurt him. I know how to do that. Absolutely. I just clicked yeah, the, the wrong the thing. Dama- that's, it, it rolled the damage for you as well. Uh, so the damage oh. uh, is a d8, but it was three points. So as you hit him, he stumbles back, but he's not dead. Do you want to keep firing? No, I'm going to hold my gun. Keep coming closer and I will shoot you in the head. Roll an intimidation roll. Okay. With a penalty dice. With a penalty? Why? Because he ain't scared of you. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a flesh wound. I mean, it is not great. Um, All right, that, that made it a sixty. Not, <laughs> yeah, does that help you? I'm afraid. All right. Well, I'm, hmm. I'm gonna. If he comes oh. closer, I'm gonna shoot him again. I'm not lying. So he's he is gonna push the roll now. Oh well, that one succeeds. So as you say that, you see he takes this blade he's holding and he throws it at you. And okay. he catches you in the side of your chest. And are you going to take some damage? Sure. Four plus two. I'm back to ten now because I take took the eight. Wait, how many points do I get back? It's been days since. You would, I, I, I would say you would have gained one per day, so it's been what five, four days, four or five days since you've been hurt. So you should yeah, have gained. So I'm back. That's fine. Uh, you can take three damage yeah. as this curved blade so, cuts in to the to your chest. I'm gonna shoot at him again. <laughs> All right, go for it. Pop, 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 pop. Right. Oh. I'm gonna spend my luck. No, I'm gonna push it. Fine, let's okay. let's let's. Somebody likes to live dangerously. <laughs> I haven't failed yet in any of my push. I don't know if I have enough to just make it into a su- regular success. I think I you would need thirteen for a regular yeah. success. Lucky number. Yeah, let's do. I'll do the success first. Okay. My luck. All right. Uh, cool. Let me see. Uh, No, he'll spend thirty. No, he'll spend twenty six points. Fail? Are you trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> you went alone. <laughs> kill me. I'm watching nothing. But don't I'm kill me. Me. I kill I'm me. I to kill you. Uh, so he'll spend twenty six points of luck to avoid the gunshot. That's fine. So he kind of, as you fire, he ducks down into next to this this garbage can beside him. Are you do it? Are you gonna keep shooting? Uh, yeah. All right. Let's sh- let's shoot at him again. Get mad shoot. and hard charging him. I'm gonna, like, I'm what? gonna push this. It's a it's a fail. I'm gonna push it again. I should just push all the time. What the fuck am I doing? Yeah, yeah, you should. Yeah, I'm. I'll be fine. I should just push all the time. Yeah, this even is- even. Even when you get a big success, just push it and see if you can get a bigger success. 
Does he want to just spin? push it every time, man. Yeah. What's up? This is like the third time in a row where I pushed it and I succeeded. Hashtag I push life. <laughs> Alright, uh, I will say uh, he won't spin, spin luck, so roll d d8 for damage. I will roll d d8? Yep, d8. Mm-hmm. Three. Three, alright. You, you see him stand up and he runs forward as if to punch you, and you manage to get him in the center of his stomach, and he kind of doubles over, bleeding out onto the ground into the fresh snow. You keep fighting. No, I'm going to walk over him and I'm say I'm going to say I told you I was going to keep shooting. What do you want from me? Roll an intimidate roll to see if he will tell you. I'm anything. not intimidating. I'm asking him nicely. Can well, I get a I don't really think you can no. ask nicely in this particular no. scenario. It's like sticking the barrel shooting. in his mouth. Could shooting you please? Him. <laughs> you're shooting him. <laughs> Have, like, double... nice. I'm trying to be cordial you can, here. You can Aww. add a bonus dice from, from to intimidation. I should have multiple um, bonuses. I've been shooting at you him. You can do intimidate with a bonus die. <laughs> you can have the bonus, but you're you're a little beyond charm at the moment, unfortunately. Damn it! All right, whatever. Wah, wah. Um, <laughs> okay. Aren't you? Don't you uh, want to push it? He is going to uh, try and punch you. <laughs> You gonna ignore me? Well, 40, 40, no, he's gonna try and punch you with a 43. So you can either oh. try and shoot or you can try and dodge. My handgun is 40 and my dodge is 20. So I'm gonna do <laughs> a handgun. I'm just gonna shoot him again. I'm gonna shoot him in this in his hand, the one that is trying to punch me. Oh, it's a cold shot. Alright, that'll, that you'll need a hard success for that oh, to there. hit a specific spot. Oh, well, we'll see. Okay, go for it. Wait, do I have enough? No, 13. I only have. I only have six luck left. I've used it. <laughs> All right, so it's fine. You, you attempt. So since since it's a call shot, you're going to miss. So let me just roll a d4 really quick to see how hard the punch hits you. Three points of damage as he. Kind of almost as he's forcing himself up, he delivers a punch to your chin. First of all, do you have a major wound yet? No. Okay. Okay. Do you keep fighting in this situation? Let me remember what Constitution said if he can keep fighting because he's been shot. Do I roll a Constitution save? Uh, No, I will say it's up to you. If you decide to keep fighting or not. Uh, he is very determined in this situation. So he, he is not give up. So what are you going to do? Jazz, if, I, yeah. if I step on the stomach that has the bullet, what roll would I need to make for that? Brawl. Definitely. Definitely brawl. That's brawl. Yeah. My brawl isn't... My, my, my shooting is higher. <laughs> I just don't want to... Alright, fine. I'm going to shoot him again. How many shots is this? Four? Yeah, that is a good question. Yeah, I believe you are on the fourth shot, so I will assume your handgun is a revolver with six bullets, so you're yeah. going yeah. to have to reload yeah, soon. Gonna have yeah, to reload well, I'm going to shoot him again, because I'm going to keep shooting at him, and then I'm going to throw the handgun in his face. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay. Well, look at that. That's a hard success. Start with eight beating damage. him with the handle. <laughs> All right. Oh, so with the damage. He rises to his feet again, but this time you manage to get him almost right where the heart is, and you can see the light leave his eyes, and he crumbles to the ground. Well, um, you said his face was covered, or just his forehead? Just his forehead. He was wearing kind of a, a cloth across it and then a piece of red, red fabric. I remove um, it. You, looking at him, you don't recognize him. I would say you can tell he's definitely an African-American man, maybe in his 30s. Um, but that's about all you can tell from looking at him. Uh, does he have, like, any markings on his forehead? Nope. Cool. I'm going to search the body. Okay. 
Um, let's see if you find anything useful. Roll me a luck roll. A luck roll? My luck is six. <laughs> yeah. Can, can it be? Wait, Burned what's my spot? It. Can I do a spot? No. Oh, it's dead. No, no, no. It's luck. My right. luck. <laughs> Jeez, that was so close. <laughs> There's nothing on the body. You look around. He doesn't have anything in his pockets. Alright, well. I'm gonna gr I'm gonna keep the forehead wrapping thing. And then uh I am going to go out and try to look for the cops. Well, no, actually. Can I do an intelligence roll to see which is the better option to report it to the cops and just run away? <laughs> sure. Or sure, you can make the roll. Because if it's in Harlem and the cops are on these fuckers' side, then maybe going to the cops oh, is no. not a good idea. Oh, no. You know what? I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go home. I'm going to be like, peace out. I'm done here. You, I'm gonna go. You do still have that blade in your chest. Do you attempt to remove it? Just walks outside with a knife sticking out. Da, 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 da. Um, TV has told me that if you pull it out, you'd bleed more. So I'm just gonna keep it on me. So what's TV? Okay. So, All right. I'm gonna follow. What, I'm what gonna TV follow. have you been watching? Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it on me because uh, a nurse in my head said just keep it on me. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> just gonna walk Hi, out. With I'm a nurse in real life. <laughs> <laughs> body and just walk. Okay. All right. You you start walking, knife in your chest. Um, uh, roll me, roll me a luck roll to see if you encounter anything. Another um, luck. <laughs> I mean, you, you burned a lot of luck. I'm sorry. All right. So you are walk. You walk for maybe ten or fifteen minutes before you start to hear police sirens behind you. Um, you figure perhaps someone called the police because of sure, it's gunshots. like because of gunshots. <laughs> so, are you are you doing anything? Are you going to go to the police? Are you going to hide from the police? How are you going to handle this? I'm going to sit down on the steps. You're in shock. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to wait for the cop. But full <laughs> view of the public so that people can see me and be like, oh, I just got attacked. I saved myself by shooting him. But, you know, the, he stabbed me because he brought a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> That is exactly what I'm going to be telling the people on the street. Like, oh my god. I All can't right. believe I got, I got mugged. <laughs> but right. I'm allowed to carry. Um, uh, and now I'm here waiting for, you know, the police to save me from me bleeding out. Yeah. Wow. So, I'm insane. Wow. Our, our camera watches as Two police officers from the 14th precinct arrive, and we'll find out what happens next in our next episode as we discover just how this particular adventure goes for for Jasper. Uh, that was a fun episode for at least for me anyway. Uh, so uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed. There was a lot of investigations going on. You know, whatever mm -hmm. it was fun. Uh, let these we got lots of clues. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in the middle of unraveling the mystery. Uh, but I'll let these wonderful people tell you where you can find them throughout the internet. And uh, we'll st we'll start with the person of the hour here, Gliza. Oh, my name is Gliza. My pronouns are they, he, she. Uh, I do a lot of things on the internet. If you want to find out all the stuff that I do, just look for at Classical Gliza. Uh, that's Twitch. Twitter, TikTok, Blueski, I am in everywhere. And if you cannot find me, uh, if you cannot find a classical Gliza, that means I'm not there. Uh, but I'm everywhere is that classical Gliza. Um, I am uh, on my own channel uh, regularly uh, streaming uh, 
Monster Care Squad every Thursdays and also cross stitching. Uh, I am trying to raise money for a friend that is uh, going through something, uh, going through abuse, and we are uh, trying to raise money uh, for them to be able to escape. Um, if you want to help, uh, you can go to uh, my Twitter. The GoFundMe is there. If you can't afford to help, just watch the stream because until the GoFundMe is um, uh, met, all of the revenue that I'll be getting from Twitch is just going to go to that GoFundMe. So, uh, yeah, uh, I know everybody's struggling right now, but anything that you can do to help my good friend, uh, Cassie, not the real name, uh, to get out of abuse uh, would be really helpful. So thank you. Okay. All right. Next up. Uh, all right. Your turn. Hi, I am Ari. I routinely here to torment Re in various games, uh, but you can find me at on Twitter at Small Shadow Snack, uh, which is very rarely used outside of me retweeting things that I've been tagged in, um, or at Blue Sky at Aurelia Crane, which has I think like grand total of one post because I very rarely use it. But here at Rerolls is the best place to find me, uh, where I again torment Re every Sunday. Okay. Uh, next up, Sir Monolith. Uh, yeah, so I can echo that. I don't really spend much time on my socials, so pretty much, if you want to find me, just come to Ree's channel. I'll be causing trouble here. Alright, next up, Mama McStabber. Hey, y'all, I'm Mama McStabber, and you can find me here on Sundays until Florence bites it, which hasn't happened yet, so... <laughs> Although her close. son may try to offer after that phone conversation. <laughs> Just going to knock on this wood. <laughs> but you can also find me on twitch.tv forward slash McStabber Studios, where we do streams multiple times a week for various World of Darkness products. And also Call of Cthulhu, which Re is a part of on Saturdays. Um, and also we do streams Wednesdays, Fridays. Uh, this coming week, we have a special Thursday stream for Monster of the Week game that we call Monster of the Month. Um, you might want to check that out at 8 p.m. And we have, you know, double feature games, Call of Cthulhu and Vampire V5 on Saturdays. So, yeah, lots of stuff. Right. <laughs> um, if you would like the opportunity to play at this table or different table or similar tables, uh, go ahead and join our Discord. We just recently wrapped up the casting call for um, Arcane Veils, our upcoming Mage the Ascension campaign. And I uh, am going to throw all kinds of crazy things at, at my players so you should have to check that out um but with that our story together has come to its end so i do hope you return next week to continue this story and to find out uh, just how they managed to get themselves out of this particular situation and hopefully we'll have our full group next week because i have a feeling they're gonna need all all of the the advantages they can get yes i do hope <laughs> our dear doctor feels better next week Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right thank you for watching and thank you all for playing and we will see you next week